Hello everyone and welcome to the forest. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and today we're talking about the sex lives of bryophytes. Bryophytes being your hornworts, liverworts, and mosses. It's a dreary wet day here in central Illinois and that's the perfect time to be talking about this subject. So if you want to find out more, join us. So the form of reproduction that plants inherited from their algal ancestors is called alternation of generations or metagenesis and it involves a growth phase which is asexual which we're seeing here called a gametophyte and a sexual phase called a sporophyte. Now this alternation of generations occurs in all plants but it is most obvious in the bryophytes or at least easier to see in the bryophytes so that's why we're going to focus on them today. It's very exciting and very interesting to learn about and it's so different from what you and I expect out of sexual reproduction. So this is a little liverwort called Frulania, and like most bryophytes, it's small, because it has to be. You see, bryophytes came onto the scene long before vascular tissue ever evolved, which means getting water to and from their cells is kind of difficult. They have to rely on osmosis to get water and diffusion to get the nutrients they need. That means if they get too big, they wouldn't be able to supply the rest of their body with these requirements. So the world of bryophytes happens on a miniature scale and it's one that really is best appreciated with a hand lens or a microscope. But for today, we're gonna just be enjoying them on trees and on the ground and on rocks. Bryophytes ties to water goes even deeper. They simply can't sexually reproduce without it. You see, like us, their sperm or male gametes are flagellated. They need water to swim through. Now at the tips of each one of these stems are housed the reproductive structures. If they're male, they're called antheridia. If they're female, they're called archegonia. And when it rains and water gets sloshed around, it inevitably picks up some of those sperm. And that continuous column of water allows the sperm to swim to where they find the female archegonia. And once they find those, they can fertilize them. And from that, you will see the sporophyte. So without water, there would be no sexual reproduction for the bryophytes. It's something that their algal ancestors had left them. It's a really cool and interesting process that requires a microscope to observe, but it's interesting to think that these plants have a little bit more in common with animals than we once thought. One of the most interesting things about mosses is that the sporophyte and gametophyte generations are actually combined, although they are genetically distinct individuals. The green part of the moss tend to associate as a moss is actually the gametophyte phase. It is genetically haploid, meaning it only has one set of chromosomes, unlike us who have two, one from mom, one from dad. The sporophyte generation are these capsules coming off of these long hair-like structures at the top. And these are genetically diploid. They have two sets of chromosomes, and they are what produce the spores that will then be blown away out of these capsules into the breeze in hopes that they can find a new place to germinate and grow into a new gametophyte. Thus, the process repeats itself. It's this, again, alternation of these generations, but in the mosses, they're kind of connected. And even more bizarre is the fact that the sporophyte generation, for the most part, can't photosynthesize enough to support itself. Therefore, it is physically attached and takes water and nutrients from the gametophyte generation in order to produce the spores that it needs. I wouldn't really call this parasitism because at the end of the day, they're both benefiting through reproduction, but it's pretty cool to think that there are two genetically distinct organisms sitting here functioning as a single one. Well everyone, I hope this gives you a newfound appreciation for the world of bryophytes. They're great plants if you just take the time to get to know them. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and continue to follow us on all of our social media accounts. We are literally everywhere, so just Google In Defense of Plants. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash In Defense of Plants. If you want to support these endeavors, just go check it out. All right, until next time, this is Matt signing out. Bye everyone.